Hi all, hope you're okay. Uh, we're going to the second lecture of uh, the data and information management. In our previous lecture, we discussed the database, the database approach where we try to look at, um, we looked at the manual filing system, the file-based system, the disadvantages of the file-based system, and then we looked at the the database approach then we discuss the database management system the data data definition data manipulation advantages and disadvantages of the data management system today we are going to discuss the database environment and the database environment basically we're going to look at um, the three levels of ANSI um, then after we shall discuss mapping and then after we shall also discuss uh, data independence so basically in this class this is what we are going to look at okay so um, the three levels of ANSI which we refer to as the American National Standard Institute Standard Planning and Requirements Committee is the standard that we base on to develop databases and we have basically three levels of ANSI the external level the conceptual level and the internal level all database administrators and database designers follow this level either either knowingly or unknowingly now these three levels of ANSI of course, um, we have the internal level, the internal level, which we have, of course, the, in, uh, the external schema. Now, you have your database where your data is stored, where, you, where your data is stored. That is the database. And then you have this internal level. The internal level shows us how data is going to be stored on your storage medium. In other words, if you're looking at a uh, basic uh, SQL statements like create database, create database, has for create table this and that. That is how you intend to store data in your database. And then also you you try to describe the different attributes and the different entities and how the domains and 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 and, and data types. All those things are in the internal level so basically all it does is to describe how you want to store data on the storage medium and then you have the conceptual level where we have the conceptual schema which looks at what data you want to store in the database of course the white data here you're looking at the different entities for example in a university database you can have the what data would be the student entity the lecturer entity the course entity the program entity then you can think of like the department entity that is the data that you're going to store in the database and at the conceptual level essentially here you are looking at um, um, a blueprint of your database you know something that is is physical how you how you look at a house plan is the same way you can you can look at a conceptual level so it's a blueprint of your database it gives us the content view of your database and then we have the external schema the external schema is the user's view of the database and this user's view of the database basically you're looking at the different the different interfaces or user views that you're going to have in your database remember within your database you have an accountant you have a finance person you have um you have an IT person, you have people who are in who, who are at the executive level. All these different users are have, do have their own views. So this is what we have. This is what these different users interface with in the database. So basically, this is the ANSYS pack, the three levels of ANSI, which we adhere to at the at the time of designing and implementation of a database. So this is the description of this three, of these three levels. The external level, I say that looks at the, what the users, the user's view of the database. So, so essentially, this is what is relevant for a user. Remember, what is relevant to a lecturer is not relevant to the academic registrar and it's not relevant to the vice chancellor. So that is why we have these different different levels and the different views already uh, demarcated at the time of uh, implementing the database. And then we have the conceptual level. The conceptual level looks at what data is going to be stored in the database. Like I said, it's the content view of the database. It looks at the different entities. In other words, was it looks at the structure of your database remember that the conceptual level is your blue is the blueprint of your database and then we have the internal level that looks at how data is going to be stored in the database like i had earlier explained then we do have the 
This just illustratively, this is what the three levels of unseen look like. So you have the internal level. If you look at the internal level, you have you have um, the different attributes that are for the for given in SQL stuff. So you have a stuff number which is an integer. You have the branch number which is also an integer. You have first name, last name which are char, and then these different characters have also domains fifteen fifteen. So basically, what happens at the internal level, you are looking at the structure of your database, the structure of your entities. Then okay. at the conceptual level, like I said, it just gives you a high level concept, a high level conceptual view of the data that you're going to have in your database. And then you have the external view. The external view, for example, in this illustration shows us the external view one that is the table called staff and external view two that is the table called branch and then in the when we're des describing mapping we're going to describe how the different mapping step take place in these different levels of uh the three levels of ANSI. then the objectives of the three levels of ANSI. objective number one is that all users should be able to access the same data because with the database being a central repository of data it means that all users within the organization should be accessing the same data it doesn't necessarily have to be the same but hypothetically it means that if there is any any changes that have, have been made to the database then these changes have to be reflected in all the places such that people are viewing and accessing the same data that is updated then the second objective of the three levels of ANSI is users view is immune to the changes in other views in other words at the external level where you are where you're having different people accessing the database or the different users. If there are any changes that are going to be made at either the internal or the, accept, uh, the conceptual level, we're saying that the users view should be immune all through. Then we have the users, we have the other objective of the ANSI level, or the ANSI spark is the users do not need to know what is stored in the storage medium. In essence, what we're saying that three level, the ANSI spark makes sure that the, the, that the, the storage media or the internal level is masked. So the user does not know what happens at the storage media, does not know how the, how data is being stored, doesn't even know what the code or the syntax that is, that is at the external level, sorry, the code, the syntax that is at the internal level. So the ANSI, the ANSI, ANSI Spark 3 level architecture tries to mask uh, what happens at the storage media because the user does not need to know what is happening there anyway. Then we do have um, the other objective is one is the, that the database administrator should be in position to uh, make changes, but these changes should not affect the user's view. Um, that can be coined with what I've been explaining. And then also we are saying that should there be changes in the, instant, in the um, internal structure, they should not be, uh, they should not affect. Um, or it, should there be changes in the physical aspects of the storage of the of the database they sh that shouldn't affect the internal level or the internal structure, and then the database administrator should be able to um, to change the conceptual structure of the database without affecting any user of the database. So um, that is those are the three levels of ANSI, and that is how they try to. To, to, to ensure either mapping or data independence. So in, in detail, we are going to discuss what mapping is, and then also we're going to discuss what data independence is. So um, mapping between the different database schemas allows for data independence, but also it helps us in checking for the checking the schemas and also checking for consistency. Now we have two types of mappings. We have the internal conceptual mapping and then we have the external conceptual map mapping. In the internal conceptual mapping, basically you're looking at the two bottom levels, two bottom levels of the ANSYS pack. That is the internal level and then the conceptual level. And then what is internal conceptual level? Internal conceptual mapping. Here we're saying that the database management system tries to find the records in the storage medium and corresponds them to those that are in the conceptual level. So in essence, what happens here is whatever is in the storage medium, it should match what is at the conceptual level or it should correspond to what is at the conceptual level. So that is what we call internal conceptual mapping. 
And then we have the external conceptual mapping where the database tries to match the data elements of the user's view to part or all of the data elements at the conceptual schema. Why am I saying part or all? Because what, what one user view has could be different to what the other user view has at the external level. However, at the conceptual level, it tries to merge the different data elements of the different users such that you have one, uh, one, one global storage. So what the, internal, what the external conceptual mapping does is to make sure that the matching of the elements of the external views is, does correspond exactly to either part or all of the elements in the conceptual schema. So whenever you're looking at mapping, look at it as your five fingers on the right and the five fingers on the left. The five fingers on the right and the five, if you bring your palms together like this, they should map, they should match, okay? So you're having the five, you have the five fingers mapped onto the other five fingers of your right. So this is what we call mapping. So hypothetically, you can use this high an analogy to try to understand the concept of mapping in databases. Then we go to data independence. Um, with data independence, we also have two levels of data independence. We have the physical data independence, and then also we have the logical data independence. And data independence essentially tries to establish that there is immunity of the different levels of the ANSYS, but should there be any changes in the lower levels of the ANSYS pack. So we basically have two, we have the logical data independence and then we have the physical data independence. What is the logical data independence? The logical data independence happens at the two bottom levels of the ANSYS pack. So the logical data independence looks at the immunity of the of the ex external schemas to the changes in the conceptual schema. So where if there are any changes that are going to happen at the at the conceptual schema, we are saying that these changes should not affect the external view. It should not affect the person who is at the external schema. So if you're going to remove or delete, sorry, remove or add any entities at the conceptual level, it should not it should not require any changes at the external level, or it shouldn't require you to rewrite the application again. Then we have the physical data independence that looks at uh, the two bottom level of two bottom levels of the ANSYS pack, and we're saying that there's this um, this um, means that there should be immunity of the conceptual schema to any changes that are in the internal schema. So if you're going to make any changes, okay, it means that there should it should not necessarily mean that we should have changes at the conceptual schema or at the external schema. So illustratively, this is how, now this is the blend, this is a blend of mapping and internal, sorry, the blend of mapping and independence together with the three levels of ANSYS pack. So you have the, extern, the internal schema, and I said that at the internal schema or at the bottom level of the ANSYS pack, you have the conceptual internal mapping. Remember we said that the conceptual internal mapping exists between the conceptual schema and the internal schema. So we said that the conceptual internal mapping is where you try to match the elements of the internal of the elements of the conceptual schema to those that were stored on the storage medium that is the ex conceptual internal mapping and the physical data independence tries to ensure that there is immunity um, uh, immunity of the conceptual level to the changes in the internal internal level or to the internal schema. In essence, what we're saying here that should there be changes in the internal schema, it should not necessitate or it shouldn't warranty concept, uh, changes in the conceptual schema. And then we have the external the external conceptual schema. The external conceptual schema, like I have earlier explained, I say that this happens at the top most, at the top two levels of the ANSYS pack. And the external conceptual schema, I say that the changes in the conceptual schema should not warrant the changes at the, ex at, the, at the external schema. So in essence, the changes in the conceptual schema should be immune. Sorry, the changes in the, ex in the conceptual schema should uh, not affect the external schema. So there, there here we have the logical data independence. And we're saying that the logical... <clears throat> 
the inter the logical data independence is the one that ensures that the changes in the conceptual schema do not affect the external schema. Whereas the external conceptual mapping tries to match the el data elements of the external schema to those two parts or all of the data elements at the conceptual schema. So in instance, if you have, like, if you're to use this demonstration, you have external schema one, let's assume that is external user one, then you have external schema two, that is assume external schema two, and then you have another external external user three. Now those are three users. User one could be an accountant, user, user two could be um, a marketing manager, and user three could be a human resource manager, all these users could be having different data elements, but at the end of it all, all these data elements should at least match the conceptual schema. And that is what we refer to as the conceptual, um, external conceptual mapping. But I'm saying that with the logical data independence, there should be immunity at the ex external schema, should there be changes at the conceptual schema. So basically, that was the that was about our lecture, um, lecture two about the database environment. I hope you enjoy it. See you then. Bye bye.